But now, with respect to the federal courts, you know, where we have the ability to take charge of our own destinies and do the work principally on our own, we cannot simply put on rose-colored glasses and push ahead in the federal courts for everything we want, believing that it will happen simply because our cause is just and our legal theories are simple and elegant and indeed irrefutably correct. But having said that, I am not suggesting that we stay away from the federal courts altogether. Indeed, I think we have made enough progress in the states that it is time to educate the federal courts the way we have been doing in the state courts and bring some very carefully crafted challenges in the federal court system. Let me give you two examples of GLAD's work in this regard. First, we are waiting any day a decision from the United States Tax Court in a case we brought on behalf of Rhiannon O'Donovan, who is here tonight. Rhiannon took a deduction on her federal income tax return for the medical expenses associated with sex reassignment surgery. The government ultimately denied the deduction and GLAD sued, fighting the government's position that these medical costs were non-deductible expenses for cosmetic surgery. We have a strong case and we hope to win. And this highlights the very legitimate healthcare needs of transgender individuals. At the same time, we hope that this rather basic case to us, simple to us, will lay the groundwork for more difficult federal litigation, such as challenging the transgender exclusion in Medicaid and in much private insurance. Second, as I hope you all know by now, GLAD has a federal constitutional challenge pending against the section of the Defense of Marriage Act, which defines marriage as only between a man and a woman for the purpose of every federal law. The, and the, the basis of our lawsuit is extremely simple. Massachusetts has one class of married people. It includes different sex couples and same sex couples equally. They all get the same marriage license. They come under the same set of legal rules by which Massachusetts regulates and relates to all married couples. And yet the federal government divides that single class of people into two parts. One part gets treated as married by the federal government for all purposes, and the other part gets treated as though they were never married. This is a classic violation of equal protection under the United States Constitution, whereas we think it is patently obvious here, the federal government cannot come forward with any adequate justification for this difference in treatment. And there's another fundamental problem with what Congress did with this section of DOMA. In our system of federalism, there are certain areas of the law that have always belonged to the states and one of those is controlling domestic relations and civil marriage. DOMA is an unprecedented act of Congress in intruding upon the rights of the states with respect to marriage. Traditionally, the federal government has always looked to state law to determine whether someone is married or not. Now, all that said, it's really important to realize what our DOMA lawsuit does and does not do. It is about how the federal government must treat people who are actually married. If we get to and win this case at the United States Supreme Court, a victory would not require any state to allow same-sex couples to marry. It would not undo any state's anti-gay constitutional amendments or mini DOMA laws. It will only impact those states that allow us to marry and those jurisdictions like New York currently that recognize our marriages. So this is not seeking a silver bullet to end LGBT discrimination in one fell swoop, but it is precisely the kind of step-by-step -step progress, incrementalism if you will, that has been the basis of GLAD's tremendous success for the past 31 years. Careful, strategic, legal work like that of our Spirit of Justice honoree tonight, Beth Robinson in Vermont, that will ultimately bring us, we believe, to our goal of freedom and equality. I actually want to let you know that we've had one victory in our DOMA lawsuit already. One of our plaintiff couples, Al and Keith Tony, brought a claim against the State Department 
because Keith was not allowed to change his name on his passport to his married name simply by presenting his marriage certificate, something that any different sex married couple can do. That policy has now been changed as of June 15th. And I, I can report something that pleases many people is that Secretary of State Clinton has since then been dismissed from our lawsuit. The, the rest of our lawsuit is on track, and you will be seeing news of legal briefing by GLAAD in the middle of November. So in closing, let me mention not silver bullets, but our secret weapons. Our plaintiffs, our plaintiffs are the heart of our litigation. They educate America about why the law must change and about why, in the case of DOMA, the law is just flat-out unfair and wrong.